So as we deduced before, min term 14 is only covered by essential prime implicant C D bar. So we have to take this prime implicant, making it essential. And by taking this implicant, we also take this min term, this min term, and also this min term. So we are shrinking this table more and more because we are going to remove this column because we already covered this min term by taking prime implicant C D bar. This min term also already covered. This min term also already covered. And also this one. And definitely we are going to remove this row also. So in the next stage of table, you should predict that we only have columns of min term 5 and 7. Okay, at this stage, we have a prime implicant that has no min term that it is covered. So this one is not essential because what this prime implicant covered already covered by the two essential prime implicant that we took so far. So this one should not be included in our final solution. We are left with this three, three variable prime implicant. So you see between min term 5 and 7, there is no min term that is covered only by one prime implicant listed here. So in this case, we will take the prime implicant with most number of min term that it covers. So in this case, we will take A bar BD because it covers both 5 and 7 and we will remove the other two because by taking this prime implicant, we also take min term 5 and 7 which means we already covered what the other two implicant covered. So only ABD is essential in this case. So taking A bar BD is already sufficient for us to cover min term 5 and 7. The other two are not needed. So we can drop the other two. So we have all essential prime implicant that we need. So we just add them as summation of product term, SOP, like this. From the sigma notation of min terms, we get this sum of product of only three essential prime implicant. B bar, C bar plus C, D bar plus A bar, B, D. So this is our final solution. You can visit this site if it's still up and running to see more details of the slide but there will be no video like this. And in class, we would like to see how you relate this to KMAP. This is to make sure that you understand what is going on in this process of Queen McCluskey minimization which actually can be done in a very similar way in KMAP. So see you in class, get ready for different exercise in class. And thank you for watching.